Hello, I'm Mary B. Today, let's talk about options for your bow hold. So no matter how you hold the bow, and it's an individual thing, how you hold the bow, so long as the goal of your bow hold is to uh, do full strokes without drastically changing the shape of your hand, um, that makes everything much more difficult. So for example, you shouldn't be able to tell really when I'm doing a down bow and when I'm doing an up bow, it should just look the same. There's a little more cushioning that goes on uh, when I'm near the heel. But really, if I was to just be like that, you can't tell if I'm just about to do a down bow or an up bow. And that's the goal really, to have a very convenient bowing hold uh, so that you it enables you to do anything at any time. You can play on the string, off the string uh, and mix them up. So how do you get a very efficient bow hold that looks the same on the way up and the way down? Well, one thing you can do is to curl your, your fingers around the bow a little more. You can choose to curl your finger around the bow using the first joint or the second one here. How do you do that is you simply move your hand But it just moves around a tiny bit and everything else really stays the same because the fourth finger is on top. But another advantage to um, curling the finger, the first finger especially, around the bow is for playing loudly. You will see a lot of violinists straightening their first finger in order to get to transfer the heaviness of the arm, the weight of the arm, into the bow. It's actually essential to use your first finger for this because if you try to do it, if you experiment and try to do it just with your fingertips, it's a very difficult thing to do, playing loudly just with your fingertips, right? It's awkward and the whole hand and the wrist start to just press down and get a bit rigid. So you can see that the first finger is actually the crucial thing here for dynamics. So you can see how my first finger is um, straightening out. I'm using using a part of finger even beyond the this joint here, I'm actually starting to use this part of my finger. So as you can see, there are many, many configurations, there are many options. I mean, one thing you can't argue with is that the pinky should be on top because it balances the bow. If you take the pinky off, you can't hold the bow up. But the further in that your, your finger curls round, the more bent your thumb is, and there's a tremendous advantage to that, the thumb being uh, bent rather than straight. Because when you're playing very quietly, uh, you can involve the thumb in, in sort of holding up the bow, it, making it feel more weightless. But also my thumb holding up the bow is another little help to the control and the ability to make the bow feel weightless. So you need a very reliable bow hold that will do everything for you, ups and downs, uh, loud and soft, on and off, uh, without too much trouble. One more thing that you can do which is lovely is articulated strokes which um, introduce a soloistic sound uh, to your playing. Uh, you can do that when your finger is curled or much more around. And articulated strokes sound like this. So 
So you can hear at the beginning of every single stroke, it starts with a little click, and that's done by a tiny little depression of the first finger. Just like that, you press the, the wood down very, very slightly and then release with a lot of um, speed. And that's a different way of playing and it's really facilitated by having the fingers and the hand curled a lot more around the bow. Uh, you can discover beautiful sounds. Uh, So you want to be able to do everything with one convenient bow hold that doesn't change massively um, depending on where you are, which direction you're going in. And you want the ability to have to start playing with soloistic sounds like um, this little click at the beginning of the strokes. So I hope you get on well with your experiments in your bow hold and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.